Today my friends and I are installing a geothermal uh, horizontal loop. It's uh, for uh, heating and cooling. Today we buried these pipe, five, six hundred foot long pipes. We have five trenches throughout the yard. We have five return lines and five supply lines running out there. All the trenches are about eight foot deep and uh, they run all the way into the house, which uh, we just finished this job. And uh, it's about four feet below the ground level going into the house. We have uh, one and a half inch holes drilled through the concrete, which where we're gonna feed these ends. Five return, five supply ends. We're inside the basement now. We just ran the five return and the five supply lines through the wall, concrete wall we have drilled. We drilled an uh, inch and a quarter holes with a hammer drill and uh, the holes are about an inch and a half around so it gave us plenty of room to uh, put silicone all around the, the inside of the pipes making sure no moisture comes in. And if you see that line in the middle where the two forms of concrete are, uh, the lines to the left are the supply lines and the line to the right are the return lines. So, and all those lines that we just ran through the wall, we're now hooking up to the QT flow center, which uh, my friend Terry here, who's also the electrician, is. Uh, I'll explain to you what's going on here, what, he, what he's got going. Uh, we mounted the manifolds on, on the side of the, of the QT center with two pieces of plywood and some thread rod through it. Figured that would make it put everything all, all together so we could come straight out of the wall right into the headers and just did, just did a simple loop right over to, to, uh, to the return lines to where it's labeled as loop and then we'll have a, have a hose going down to the uh, heat exchanger and then one out of the heat exchanger into the bottom into the bottom of this which will be the supply out to the uh, to the ground loop system I uh, figured that'll make everything into a nice small compact little package and that gives you easy access right here with these mounted low easy access to your tank to fill your keep to fill your tank up with the uh, antifreeze and the water solution uh, everything should be pretty simple that way, nice compact little unit. Uh, we expect everything to work out, out just fine. And then you have easy access to change your filters and stuff like that. You get access to your all your electronics and everything for servicing. The filters are, are on the right side. And uh, we're just about to wire it up. He's uh, already got the wire running to my, uh, to my uh, electrical box, which is over here. It's all the way up against the wall, up, up along the, I don't know if you can see it, it's one of those wires that's running, one of the silver wires that's twisty. It's running up, it's running past the, the wood stove, and uh, it's kind of dark, but you can't see that's the electrical box that we're wiring into. Got the wheelbarrow ready to mix up a little cement. So uh, as you can see, we've got the 10 pipes running through the concrete wall. And uh, we dug out below it to let some concrete get in around the pipes. And if you see, there's one extra hole in the wall. What we're going to do there is when you join two forms of concrete, is uh, you should have rebar reinforcing the two slabs of concrete so you don't have a shift. So that's what that pipe, that's what those extra holes for to put rebar which is already plugged from the other side with expanding foam. So uh, right now all I'm going to do is put a piece of rebar in that one hole that's open and uh, there's a bar in the bottom and then right now I'm just going to mix up about 12 bags of concrete and uh, form that real nice around those those pipes so it should be dry by tomorrow and then I'll, that'll be all I have to do is fill it in with dirt and and then uh, we'll be plugging it in and starting it up today. Yesterday we got a little bit of rain right after we were finished backfilling it all in. As you can see, got it all 
graded off. All the holes are, all the trenches are filled back in. And uh, when you do that, you want to pack it down good too. I took uh, three three friends of mine and myself, and we did it in a weekend. Now it's Monday, and we're getting ready to start it up. Got the cement down in the ground. We have the rebar reinforcing the cement. So uh, it's all done out here now, except for moving the dirt in. And it looks like Terry's just now installing the last hose. That would be the fifth hose of the return line. It's we put the the bottom. The bottom one's the first trench, and uh, two, three, four, five. There's five trenches, and we just got them all tightened up. So now all we have to do is one the run the one the one return line right into the unit, and it's completely finished with the plumbing part of it. He's uh, already got the wire in it wired up with the thermostat so one step yet to do is uh, right now we'll be adding the antifreeze okay we're about to do the final step here we're gonna plug in the pump and fill it up with antifreeze Already put five gallons in, and the pump pumps pumping about as fast as I can dump it. So uh, we got five gallons in. We'll put ten gallons in this system all together, and then we'll fill it up the rest of the way with water. Now the tank's full. Still filling up the lines. pushing the air bubbles back up so it'll start pumping really fast now. Let it get some air out of there and then dump dump away. They recommend that you uh, leave the system run for about a day when you first plug it in to get all the air bubbles worked out. But that'll be about it. So uh, we're just going to fill it up the rest of the way with water. Plug it in.